Next time you cook food in a microwave oven, I want you to consider this. The microwaves, the electromagnetic waves, are actually produced by electrons orbiting in circular orbits around magnetic field lines, and they're orbiting at a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. They're orbiting 2.4 billion times every second. That's a remarkable fact. And the question asks about this particular situation, and it asks this, what is the strength of the magnetic field? Well, let's do some preparation. Okay, for starters, we're going to identify the relevant information in the paragraph that poses the problem. First off, we're told they're electrons, they're negatively charged, and we know their charge and their mass, and they orbit at a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. And then we're asked to figure out the strength of the magnetic field. Now, it doesn't seem like there's enough information here. We're not told how big the orbits are. We're not told how fast the electrons are going. So that means as we work, we would expect those factors to cancel in our calculation. And let's see if that happens. Well, let's do some preparation to start. Suppose we have a region of uniform magnetic field, like so. Okay? And we've got a negatively charged particle. We have an electron. Okay? And it's moving at a certain speed in this region of magnetic field. It's moving at a speed v. The right-hand rule tells us this. If the particle is moving at a speed v in a magnetic field in this direction, that's going to predict a force to the right. But since it's a negatively charged particle, the force will be to the left. And so as a consequence, this particle is going to go in a circular orbit like so. Okay, so the particle will go in a circular orbit. And the force is produced by the magnetic field. So the force is equal to the magnitude of the charge times the speed, times the strength of the magnetic field. But since it's going in a circle, it's also true that the force is just equal to m times v squared divided by r. That's from way back in chapter 6. That's the force for any object moving in a circular orbit. So we can equate these two. q times v times b is equal to m times v squared divided by r. And let's go ahead and solve this equation for the speed, okay? Well, one factor of V cancels, and so I'm gonna solve for this factor of V right here, and I get the following. The speed is equal to the magnitude of Q, magnitude of the charge, times B, times R, divided by M. Now, you could pull this from the chapter, but I prefer to start from first principles. I prefer to start from these basic relationships and kind of like get to this point because it helps me wrap my mind around the problem. Now we also know this, the particle is going in a circle and the speed at which it's going in a circle is just equal to distance, the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r, divided by the time to make one orbit, which is the period. Well, the period is just 1 over the frequency, so the speed is 2 pi r times f. So I can take this relationship for the speed and I can equate it to this relationship for the speed, and I get this. 2 pi r times f is equal to the magnitude of q times b times r divided by m. Now notice this. I've just equated two expressions for the speed, and so the speed does not appear in this equation anymore. And also, the size of the orbit cancels. All I'm left with is the frequency, which I know, the charge and the mass, which I know because it's an electron, and the magnetic field, which is what I'm trying to solve for. And if I do that, if I take this relationship and solve it for the magnetic field, I get this. The magnitude of the magnetic field is equal to 2 pi times f times m divided by the magnitude of the charge. And with that, we're ready to solve. Well, our solution is very, very straightforward. We have an expression for B. The magnetic field is 2 pi times F times M, which is the mass of the electron, divided by the magnitude of the charge. And these are numbers that we know, okay? The frequency is 2.4 gigahertz, 2.4 times 10 to the ninth hertz. The mass is the mass of an electron. Well, we know the mass of an electron, okay? That's just 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31st kilograms. The magnitude of the charge is just E, and E is 1.6 times 10 
to minus 19th coulombs. And so we have everything we need to calculate the magnitude of the magnetic field. And if we do that, we get a magnitude of the magnetic field at 0 0.086 Teslas. Now, how are we going to assess this result? Okay. We know that a magnetic field inside a magnet in a laboratory might be as big as a Tesla or so. Okay. Whereas a refrigerator magnet is around one millitesla or so. And this number is in the middle, stronger than a refrigerator magnet weaker than a laboratory magnet. And that makes sense. It's, we want it to be somewhat in, the, in, in, the, in between because it's an everyday object, but we expect the magnetic field to be bigger than the magnetic field for magnets that stick to your fridge. And so the net result is our answer matches with the way we know the world works.